was 20 years ago this weekend that a 21-year-old Wyoming college student named Matthew Shepard was lured from a bar, robbed and beaten in an attack that would take his life. In 1998, the world's attention was brought to Laramie, Wyoming, where a horrific crime occurred, one that claimed the life of a young University of Wyoming student that changed the lives of countless others and highlighted the plight of LGBTQ plus identities and the issues they faced on a daily basis. The life claimed was that of Matthew Shepard, born December 1st, 1976 to Judy and Dennis Shepard. Matthew studied political science and international relations with the goal to work in foreign services. On October 6, 1998, Matthew was kidnapped and beaten by Aaron McKinney and Russell Henderson, who left him tied to a buck fence on the outskirts of Laramie. He was left bleeding, bound, and alone for 18 hours before being discovered. Matthew succumbed to his injuries and was pronounced dead on October 12, 1998. While Matthew was hospitalized, national news sources began covering Matthew Shepard's case. News sources began focusing on the hate crime aspects and the brutality of the attack. News articles with titles such as Gay Man Beaten and Left for Dead, Two Are Charged, and Gay Student Brutally Beaten, Four Arrested, were common nationwide. Four weeks after Matthew's death, a New York City-based theater company, the Tectonic Theater Project, traveled to Laramie to explore the issues for a potential performance project. This project would become the play, The Laramie Project. The idea came from Moises Kaufman's curiosity in relation to why Matthew Shepard was murdered and how Laramie compared with the rest of the world. You're not very much like Laramie. I said, if, let's, let's do an experiment to see how much you are or are not like Laramie. I said, if you're gay and you're out, raise your hand. So there were 600 people in the room. 12 people raised their hand. So I said, if... If the statistics are remotely correct, that means that there's 50 people in this room right now that are hiding from you. <laughs> there's 50 people in the room right now that don't feel comfortable telling you that they're gay. And so what I get is everybody in the room going like this. <laughs> um, and so I let that sink and I said, why have you created a community in which, again, lesbian brothers and sisters can tell you. And by the way, that was the same number that I got when I did this in Laramie. After proposing the idea for this project, Moises and nine members of the company traveled to Laramie. They would continue to return to Laramie six times over the course of a year and a half and conduct over 200 interviews. Edited versions of these interviews and journals from the members were discussed and workshopped, and the play finally came to fruition, premiering in Denver in 2000. Despite the Laramie Project being performed nationwide, talk of Matthew had quieted. Judy and Dennis Shepard created the Matthew Shepard Foundation, where they told Matthew's story and traveled around the country advocating for equal rights for members of the LGBTQ community. Momentum and support was slow until the 10-year anniversary of Matthew Shepard's murder gained national attention again. 2020 did a special, interviewing those involved in the case that had taken place 10 years prior. The 2020 special primarily focused on the fact that his murder was not legally labeled as a hate crime due to the lack of legislation to label it as such. So, the focus of the 2020 special was on how the motive of the beating and murder was drug-related. This special infuriated Moises Kaufman, and the members of the Tectonic Theater Project went off again to conduct interviews with many of those they had back in 1998 and 1999, along with some new faces, including Aaron McKinney, Russell Henderson, and Judy Shepard. Eleven years after Matthew Shepard's death, October 12, 2009, Tectonic Theater Project premiered The Laramie Project, 10 years later, in 150 theaters throughout all 50 states and 8 countries to spread the facts of the situation and how it is still relevant and important to discuss. Simultaneously, the Hate Crimes Prevention Act would add new legislation to what could be considered a hate crime, but it had been rejected many times. In 2007, the Local Law Enforcement Hate Crimes Prevention Act had hope of being implemented, the bill was passed by the U.S. House of Representatives, but was delayed and threatened to be vetoed by President George W. Bush. 
Finally, in 2009, the Matthew Shepard and James Byrd Jr. Hate Crimes Prevention Act was signed by President Barack Obama with Judy and Dennis Shepard present. This made it easier to investigate and prosecute hate crimes while including a new federal criminal law that willfully caused or attempting to cause bodily injury to someone because of race, color, religion, national origin, sexual orientation, gender identity, or disability of any person to be included. There is no denying that Matthew Shepard's death has impacted the country and much of the world even years after his death. Dozens of artists and authors have been inspired by his story, infusing it into their art. In 2018, a collection of Matthew Shepard's personal items were displayed at the Smithsonian National Museum of American History. And that same year, Matthew Shepard's ashes were laid in Washington National Cathedral near Helen Keller and Woodrow Wilson after years of not being buried out of fear his grave would be vandalized. He was one of the first cases where the church embraced someone from the LGBTQ community. There is still a long way to go when it comes to equal rights for members of the LGBTQ community, but progress is happening. In 2013, the Supreme Court recognized the right of same-sex couples to marry and made it legal in all 50 states. In 2015, President Barack Obama repealed the U.S. military's Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy. In 2020, the Supreme Court determined that firing an employee due to their sexual orientation and gender identity was a violation of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Even more recent, February 25th of 2021, the Equality Act passed through the House of Representatives, which prohibits discrimination of an individual based on their sex, sexual orientation, and gender identity in several areas such as employing, credit, and housing. While these are steps in the right direction, many issues still exist for the LGBTQ community. Conversion therapy, adoption rights for LGBTQ parents, and the recent persecution of trans identities through discriminatory legislations are only a few issues currently causing deep concerns. Change can't happen if we forget history, change facts, ignore truth, and remain silent to the continued injustices in our nation. Matthew's legacy is far too important for any one of us to forget.